Sure, we know about all the cool stuff big toy companies like Hasbro, Kenner, Mattel have made. But what about Remco? Yep, they made some really cool toys. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Jump Man, coming back at you with another video. That's right, it's time. And we're going to talk about toy company Remco because I think the toy company Remco has kind of got the bad end of the shaft. Is that the saying? The wet part of the stick is another saying. Or I guess you could say Remco got the ass end of the hog. But Remco really wasn't that bad of a toy company. Now, a lot of us that grew up in the 80s, we have kind of see Remco as a cross between those rack toy companies and the major toy companies. They were kind of in between because a lot of times in the 80s, they were really just trying to play catch up with other toy companies. We're releasing toys from movies that other toy companies didn't want or maybe kind of spoofing, I'll say, for the other toy lines. Before we look at the cool stuff they did make, let's look at the 1990s, where they were barely hanging on. They only had three major releases in the 90s. Now, they did go bankrupt, and the company was bought out by Jack Specific, but let's look at some of those 90 toys. As I said, there was only three major releases. One of those was Steel Tech. This motorized construction set would have been a lot of fun to any kid in the 90s. And if you were a fan of Rock'em Sock'em Robots, and a fan of Terminator 2, well, they combined the both with Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Rock and Sock'em Robots. Aw, oh, you knocked the block off my T-1000. And in the action figure line, they had SWAT cats. Yep, that's right. SWAT police, but they're cats. And they're not just cats, they're cats with a K. Now that's just crazy talk. As you can see, they didn't really have much going for them in the 90s. And like I said, in the 80s, they were just trying to compete with the other major companies by releasing kind of knockoff toys or license to movies that no one really cared about picking up. Like Karate Kid. I know it's crazy. The other toy companies passed on Karate Kid, but not Remco. The Karate Kid action figures. Not a great toy line, but if you're a fan of Karate Kid, they were pretty fun. They also released... AWA All-Star Wrestling. Now in the 80s, wrestling was really starting to take off. It used to be just some local events, but in the 80s, it really became what we know of it today. You had the big stars like Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, the Million Dollar Man, the Honky Tonk Man, and many others. But you didn't have those in this line. These were wrestlers from AWA. And if I knew what AWA, I would tell you more about them, but I honestly never heard of it. I wasn't into wrestling. And the only wrestlers I knew appeared on that wrestling cartoon in the 80s. They also would try to pick up some of the He-Man dollars with the DC comic book release of Warlord. As you can see here, they look a lot like He-Man figures. But without a doubt, their biggest hit action figure line of the 80s is one we know and love today as Universal Monsters. These were great figures and sold really well for Remco. They're still really loved by toy collectors today. They have a great likeness to those Universal Monsters and the thing I loved about them, they look really good in my Star Wars Kenner Cantina playset. They just look like they fit right in. Now, what about those really great Remco toys that I keep teasing? Well, we're going to have to go way back for that. Way back. The 1950s. Back then, they were making toys unlike any other toy company at the time. Let's take a look at five of the really cool toys they made in the 50s. First up, we have Big Max. This was a conveyor belt toy that would load a truck. It came with metal pieces that would go down the conveyor belt, but you could put whatever you wanted to to load it into the truck. It sure does look like a lot of fun. Maybe a kid's dad in the 1950s had a Firebird. Well, the kids could too with the Firebird 99. This was a steering wheel with a dashboard with all kinds of gadgets. It would tell you how fast you were going, had a radio to change dials, even the windshield wipers would work. So it was just like you had a car, just like daddy. And let's say you always wanted to go to Coney Island, but you never had the money. Well, you could act like you were at Coney Island with this crane machine game. We all know what a crane machine is. You don't have to go to Coney Island to see one. And just think, your dad might have played with this toy back in the 50s. Now before we leave the 50s, let's look at the coolest toy from the 50s that Remco did. Hell, it might be the coolest they ever done. If I did a list of 10 cool toys before my time, this might be on it. Now we all know about the Kenner movie viewer, you crank and watch a movie, and we talked about other ones where you look through to watch scenes from a movie. 
This one beats all that. And this was from the 50s. Somehow the kid movie viewing experience went down from the 1950s to when we started getting them in the 70s. Take a look at this. The Movie Land Drive-In Theater. As you can see here, you could park little cars like it's at a drive-in and have movie clips play on the big screen, just like a movie theater. Man, they sure don't make toys like this anymore. Hell, they didn't even make toys like this when I was a kid. And what would they show? Well, they had the classics. Heckle and Jekyll, Have Gun Will Travel, Mighty Mouse, and everyone's favorite, Farmer Alfalfa. Now, I mean, I don't know who that farmer is. I guess it's Alfalfa from The Little Rascals. He grew up to be a farmer, but maybe it was a good thing I didn't know, because when I was searching it, I saw some books, and I don't know if that will fly today. But that's a look at some of the cool toys they released in the 50s. And as you can see, weren't these toys a lot cooler than the Remco toys we got in the 80s and the 90s? Well, you hadn't even seen the 1960s yet. So let's take a look. One of the most famous from the 1960s is Frogman. This was an underwater scuba diver that could really go underwater. Wind him up and he would swim around the water. I remember having something like this in the 70s or maybe early 80s that was smaller. It didn't look this cool. This is the underwater swimmer I would have wanted. It looks like it'd have been a lot of fun to play with. And even if you weren't a fan of the television show Supercar, you had a Supercar car that just looked like a lot of fun. You could get this car to go in its own design path. There was many different paths to pick from and you could just turn it on and watch it go. And then they had probably one of the longest names for a toy ever. Kennedy Airport Air Traffic Control Center. Whew, that's a lot of words. Here you would use your voice to track, land, and take off airplanes. And through the headset, you could hear pilots talking through the tower. <laughs> this looks awesome. I want to play with it right now. And if you're a fan of big old trucks, you had true smoke trucks. All these were were really big trucks that would really smoke. That's right, you could pollute the air just like the big boys. But what was the coolest one of the 60s of them all? This, is, this just looks, not only does this look awesome, it just looks so fun. Check it out. Long Rage Mortar. That's right, a mortar. Look at this thing. It looks like a real weapon from World War II. This thing looks awesome. And see those mortar shells it fires off? Oh, no, that's not foam. Those are thick, huge pieces of plastic. Can you imagine getting hit in the face with one of those? It wouldn't be fun to be on the receiving end of it, but it sure would have been fun to launch it off. That looks awesome, doesn't it? It looks like a lot of fun. As you can see, Remco was really cool in the 50s and the 60s. That's just five items. I could have done a list of 10 from each decade that was really cool. Now in the 70s, they started to slip a little. Not as bad as the 80s and the 90s, but you can see where they were starting to slip. They were starting to try to do more licensed toys. But you can kind of understand that because in the 70s when it really took off trying to sell toys based on movies or television shows. And probably one of their biggest licensed productions in the 70s was based on Spider-Man. This is the engineered Spider-Man. Yep, Spider-Man could climb up a web. Well, really it was just a string, but this thing was awesome. And it's so great. A lot of kids had this one back in the 70s. But they didn't do just licensed stuff in the 70s. You had another really cool weapon. The System 7 Rifle. This was like seven toys in one. You needed a key to unlock all the features. You could even launch off a parachuter to drop messages behind enemy lines. It had two missile launchers, a decoder, a telescoping sight scope, and more. This thing looks like a lot of fun. And one thing big in the 70s besides vans was Doom Buggy. And here you had Doom Buggy Willies. Now, it's kind of a cheesy RC car because it has a cord. Didn't you hate those RC cars with a cord? But it looks pretty fun to play with. Today, everything you buy is smart. Smart refrigerator. A smart car, smart TV. Well, in the 70s, you could have bought a smart robot with Mr. Brain. It was smart, at least 70s technology smart. You could program it to go around objects in your room. That is, if you didn't clean your room after you programmed it. It would also let out smoke. And best of all, it could even turn his head. Now, I can't say that this one here is the best toy they did in the 70s, but I probably could say it's probably one of the oddest or creepiest. And it's the... McDonald's playset and you think it's based on a fast food restaurant where it looks like a McDonald's maybe has a little play area some tables and have some figures where you can have them order a Big Mac and everything which would be fun but no it's based on Ronald McDonald land I guess maybe that was a plan they had in the 70s to do something like Disney with Ronald McDonald 
I'm not really sure, but it's kind of weird. As you can see, this playset, it lands somewhere between cool and creepy. One thing that makes it really creepy for sure is that creepy, scary Ronald McDonald right there at the gate of the magic fast food land. Playing with a McDonald's restaurant seems a lot more fun than this thing here. Well, that's 50 years of Rimco summed up in a less than 20 minute video. I just wanted to really show that Rimco was at the top of their game at one time. Because again, a lot of us think of Rimco, we think of something between rack toy and rip off toys. And some people forget about the very cool stuff they made. Especially in the 1950s and the 1960s when most of us wasn't alive. And if we were, we wasn't playing with toys. We were saying guy guy goo goo. But after that, we did play with a lot of Rimco toys in the 70s. And I guarantee most of you watching this video has some of those Universal Monster Rimco figures, or you at least wanted them. They're awesome. Well, let me know. Did you play with any of these 1950s or 1960 toys? Did they look fun, or are you like, man, that looks like an era way before my time and looks boring? I think something about those 50s and 60s toys look better than some of the toys we actually had in the 70s and 80s. Well, I want to thank you for watching. As always, if you're not like my content, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk again soon. Hey, jump <laughs> man, channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.